Like many other religious faiths, Christians participate in periods of fasting, prayer, and penance to bring one closer to God. The most important fasting season of the Orthodox Christian calendar is the Great Lent, which is a period of purification leading up to Pascha, or Easter, the most important festival within the Church. During the Great Lent, Christians fast from animal products, offer prayers, give alms, and practice penance. Today on our Noble Lineage, we are honored to have with us His Eminence Metropolitan Nikitas Lilias, Director of the Patriarch Athenagoras Orthodox Institute, or PAOI. It is the only accredited graduate level program in Orthodox studies outside of a seminary in the U.S and seeks to teach, promote, and sustain the traditions of Orthodox Christianity. Our institute is a member of the Graduate Theological Union, which brings together various institutes, schools, theological academies from the various religions and faith traditions of the world, including not only the Christian tradition, but also the Buddhist, the Muslim, the Jewish tradition, as well as a variety of other expressions of life. The Graduate Theological Union is the largest partnership of seminaries and graduate schools in the United States. Prior to joining PAOI, Metropolitan Nikitas was the inaugural Metropolitan of Hong Kong and Southeast Asia. He has also studied and lived in a variety of countries and cultures, including seminary school in the US, followed by advanced study in Greece and Russia. Metropolitan Nikitas is bishop in the Greek Orthodox Church, which is part of Eastern Orthodoxy, one of the two main branches of Christianity. Orthodox Christianity is most common in Eastern Europe, including Russia, Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece and Cyprus. The purpose of Christian life in the Orthodox tradition is really only one thing, and that is to reach full union with God. There are two types of understanding. One talks about God using logic, reason, the human mind. But Orthodox Christianity uses the mysterious approach to God. We want to be transfigured. We want to be one with God in holiness. And that is our true call, is to become holy like God and to live that life of holiness, of sanctification, of unity, not only here on earth, but into eternity. The most important time for the Eastern Orthodox Church is the celebration of Jesus' resurrection during the Great Feast of Pascha, or Easter. The Great Lent is a time of purification through prayer, fasting, and penance prior to Pascha. There is not only the meaning of the resurrection for the historical aspect and the theological one. We as people, as Christians, are called to crucify ourselves, our passions, our ways, our egos, so that we can be resurrected with Him. We know that in the earliest church, there were moments of fasting, abstaining, not eating. In the words of Christ Himself, Christ speaks about fasting. He tells us, when you fast, wash your face, anoint your head. The fast periods were one day, or two days of very strict and austere fasting. They perhaps some dried fruit, some nuts, uh, perhaps some dried bread. Prayer and fasting, in which one sets aside animal products, wine and oil, play an important role in the life of Orthodox Christians throughout the year as one follows the teachings of Jesus, who taught that these were the ways to banish offensive spirits. We know that when he speaks about the demons which are difficult to cast out, he says these must be cast out by fasting and by prayer. We know that even historically, if we look at things, 
the very first commandment given to humanity by God was one of fasting and obedience. For God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. And because we broke the fast and we were disobedient, we now relive the fast and we must fast to regain paradise. Fasting, however, is just one aspect of purification during Lent. Fasting should be accompanied by almsgiving, by prayer. It reiterates the words of Christ, the practices of the early church, that all of Christian life is a tapestry. All the disciplines must come together. Fasting, prayer, almsgiving, sacrifice, sharing, studying scripture, reading other writings which are of value to us spiritually. During the time of the fast, we look to simplicity. Things which don't need to be prepared. Things which don't really need to be cooked. And the other thing that we look to is we avoid the foods which give us pleasure. Because we restrict our social life as well, we have more money. And what does one do with the money? We take what we have and we give it to the poor. We share from the riches which we have, which we're not really ours. We're only stewards of everything that we have in our lives. We take it and we give it to those people who have less. What are the basic rules for a fast? When we return in a few moments, Metropolitan Nikitas will tell us more. You are watching Our Noble Lineage on Supreme Master Television. That's what Lent does for us, to give us a different orientation of life. So we break these addictions, these psychological habits, the eating habits as well, to take ourselves from that path of life onto a different one. Here are the basic rules of the fast. There is, of course, no meat, and that is the minimum. There is no fish. There are no dairy products. There are no eggs. And on Saturdays and Sundays, there is no wine. There is no oil. So we see that we've separated ourselves from the animal kingdom. Welcome back to our noble lineage on Supreme Master Television. For the occasion of the Great Lent in observance right now, His Eminence Metropolitan Nikitas of the Patriarch Athenagoras Orthodox Institute is sharing with us its significance in the Orthodox Christian Church. The Lenten season provides one with an opportunity to take a look at oneself, to test values and see how they rank relative to the values Jesus has taught and to alter one's heart and mindset to adopt new ways of thinking and acting through penance. Penance should help that person understand what's wrong in life and trying to correct it. Perhaps making the proud be a little bit more humble 
making the rich give a little bit more to the poor, making those who are stubborn open up their hearts, making those who talk too much be a little bit more silent. After all, speech is silver and silence is golden. Those are the elements of penance that we should try to establish in our lives, not during Lent alone, but during each and every day as Christians. During the Lenten period, every aspect of one's life should be positive, with introspections on how to progress as an individual. Metropolitan Nikitas explains that there are three levels of balance one needs to achieve to be complete and whole. The first is to be in balance with God. That is the easiest form, because no matter what we do, God continues to love us. And our second level of balance is the community. During the time of the fast, we have to overcome the obstacles, the barriers that we might have with people, correct our transgressions. And the most difficult of levels of balance is with oneself. That's because we see ourselves subjectively. We don't look at ourselves objectively. In today's contemporary society, one may question the benefits and necessity of age-old religious traditions and rituals. Metropolitan Nikitas assures there is a definite place for them. People look at aspects of the fast and they ask, is it really necessary? And I'll give you a few examples to teach you how by fasting we return to a more natural state and we cleanse ourselves and purify ourselves and return to God. During the fast, really wine is not allowed. And you'll say, what's wrong with wine? When you begin to have too much wine, you are no longer in control of your life. Your life becomes changed. Your character perhaps changes. When you eat a lot of these fatty foods, when you eat that steak, and all that fat, and you drink that wine, you become sluggish. You feel like sleeping. You don't need to sleep so much during the fast. You need to be vigilant. You need to be awake. We no longer think we're addicted to wine, but the reality is something else. In our understanding of Lent, we try to also break other habits, other addictions. It might be an addiction to meat or a psychological addiction to meat or even our idea of watching TV, working on the computer, and uh, surfing the internet. And if we look at things objectively, we see that we become addicted to things. That we create in our lives idols, and we become to worship them. We begin to worship them to let them fill our times. They are our gods, our computer, our life at the gym. You see, we've established in our lives routines and patterns, and we become addicted to them, and we choose to be part of that or have them in our lives. Can we reorient and change our lives to regain paradise in our relationship with God? And we do that by sacrificing, even through fasting. Fasting, which is joined by prayer. And almsgiving, because we see God in other beings, and our focus isn't me, and what's good for me. By fasting from animal products, one honors the sanctity of life above personal dietary preferences and habits. Eliminating animal products and animal life from the fasting period is important, I think, on many levels. First of all, let's just look at the idea of cruelty to animals. Uh, it's a respect for life. And we see that we as human beings are not the only form of life. But if we want respect, we have to give respect. In God's original creation, in the Garden of Eden, we never hear of problems between animals and human beings. There was a harmony. 
but we've distorted God's original creation and the balance, the harmony, has been lost. The second level has to do with preparation, preparing uh, animal products, animals themselves for us to eat, takes a lot of time. The emphasis of the fast is not in preparing things, but in simplicity. And man doesn't live by those products. Man lives by the word of God. And there are so many things in this world which we can eat. Uh, you get so much protein from so many things which do not come certainly from the animal kingdom, but come from the plant kingdom. And we see that people survive well with them. The great monastics of the Orthodox world, they live a very ascetical life, a very disciplined life. And they are much stronger, I would say, not only in spirit but in body than we are. So for example, people say, oh, I need to eat meat at least twice a week. Well, that's foolishness. No one needs to. No one has to. We develop those thoughts, those patterns in our minds and in our lives. And we become psychologically, if not physically, addicted to a variety of things. We can limit things. That we can become more dependent on much simpler things of vegetables and fruits, breads and grains. The earth provides so much because God gave it to us. I think all of us in this world need to practice disciplines of virtue. I think the idea of fasting is important because it teaches us that we're not dependent on our own resources and food. We're dependent on the Word of God and God's mercy and His love. We become more compassionate not only to the animal kingdom but to others who see us, how we eat and how we act. At the conclusion of our interview today, His Eminence offered his lofty wishes to our viewers of all faiths and cultures. As I offer you my best wishes for you and your own tradition, your own faith, your own people, your own land, your own identity. And may God bless that. And may from your own person, good and virtuous things come forth so that virtue and truth goodness and hope will live in this world not only in our generation but we leave it better for the next generation and the next generation will build on what we've given so the future is indeed more promising thank you very much Our gratitude to His Eminence Metropolitan Nikitas Lulius for his wisdom and insights into the great Lent traditions of Orthodox Christianity. And now, gallant viewers, please stay with us for Between Master and Disciples, coming up next on Supreme Master Television. Blessed be your high-minded ideals and visions during this Lenten period of self-cultivation. Please visit www.orthodoxinstitute.org to learn more about the Patriarch Athenagoras Orthodox Institute and His Eminence Metropolitan Nikitas. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash nl 